Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to go ahead and share with you something that I've been experimenting on. Uh, while I've been working on the 51 animation challenges, it gets me to start to explore more with Blender to try to figure out how I can achieve something, some specific effect inside of Blender. And sometimes it leads me to success and sometimes it leads me to failure. And I, I just kind of want to show you guys something that kind of baffles me and yet kind of interests me in, in some way, okay? so. Uh, I'm going to draw out a smiley face. Just really basic, really simple, okay? So, here's the thing. I need to go into object mode, okay? And I press 7, and I move my camera to a right angle to my animation, and I press RZ and type in 90, okay? RZ, which is rotate on your keyboard, and Z for Z axis, rotate on the Z axis, and then you type in 90 on your numpad for 90 degrees, okay? And we can see that the camera is no longer facing it from this point of view. It's now facing it this way. So if I press 0 to get into the camera's point of view, we are seeing the narrow side of our animation. And the idea that I could possibly even remotely ever see the narrow side of an animation that I may have potentially spent hundreds of hours animating does not sound appealing to me and you know the idea of you know yes you can draw objects in three-dimensional space inside of blender like if, if I wanted to draw a cube let me go into uh, draw mode real quick uh, I need to select my strokes here and go into draw mode and uh, let's say I press 7 and I draw out uh, a box here okay just a really rough box all right that's cool let me go into edit mode select this little square press L and press shift D and press Z in order to lock it to the Z axis and move it up okay and then I go back into draw mode I am able to draw four straight lines I'm going to rotate and get these in position in edit mode I can go ahead and select this L press 7 grab it and move it to this corner grab this other line grab it move it to this other corner grab this other line press L grab it move it to this other corner grab this other line press L grab it and put it at this other corner and I have a three-dimensional box and it might sound appealing to you to say I want my lines to be animated in 3d space that sounds so cool and yes it does it does sound cool however if you're going to be doing that you might as well go into object mode click add mesh and add a cube Okay, it's a lot faster that way. And make drawing out your backgrounds, to me, it just seems like in 3D space, it's gonna look like a 3D model, even if it's just a series of lines. So who cares if it's a 3D model? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, and I'm gonna go ahead and select all of this with this cube in edit mode. Oh, I need to select this and go into edit mode. Okay, and delete that box, okay? Yeah, animating something in three-dimensional space uh, sounds like a nightmare if it's in 2D. Just sounds like an absolute nightmare. So what I need to do in order to get this guy to always face the camera, okay? Let me go ahead and press Control z a bunch of times and get the camera right back to where it was located at originally. Oh, okay, it's not gonna do that. All right, well, dissolve. Okay, so it's fine with the camera right where it is actually. So let me go ahead and select this dude and I'm going to do something. I'm going to go into the object constraints tab, okay? And it looks like a belt for a vacuum or for the fan belt inside of your car, okay? Or older cars, do fan belts still exist? I think they got phased out. But anyways, I'm going to click on this button here for object constraints. I'm going to add an object constraint. Damped track, okay? So this damped track has nothing to follow. I can click on this blocky thing and click on camera or I can click this eyedropper and click on the camera. Now you'll notice that he immediately faced the camera, but there is a problem. Let me press Control Z really quick here. Memorize how he looks from this position here, okay? And let me flip to the narrow end and then press Control Z. Do you see it, the difference? Did you see the problem? Let me press Control Shift Z to redo it. Do you see the difference? Okay, Control Shift Z to redo. The difference is that this little curly section of his smile is on the right side now. Whereas when I press Control Z, his smile is on the left side. So let's press Control Shift Z in order to redo it. Okay, so the damped track is fully applied to the camera. Let's click on negative Y, okay? So now, 
is just fine. And when I grab my camera in object mode, if I move him, move the camera over here 90 degrees, he follows. If I follow him another 90 degrees, he follows. Okay, so now we've just, we've just established that we can use a 180 degree rule with this technique. However, this does start to fall apart at some point, okay? And notice how when I move him up, my smiley face man is looking up with my camera, okay? Regardless of if the camera's pointed at it or not. So that's that's something that's kind of cool. So let's let's keep this here and let's just move this. Okay, so so far so good. All right, so let me go ahead and move it more so past the 180 degree mark. And we start to see that he's doing a front flip or something. It's, it's weird. He starts to flip upside down. And it's not because uh, uh, of where I, I positioned the camera. It's just that he starts to rotate. So when you do this kind of billboarding, it's really quick. It's really easy, but it only works for the 180 rule. You can, you can actually get it to work a little bit above 180 degrees, but you only want to use the 180 degree rule. Now, if you guys don't know what the 180 degree rule is, there is an excellent video about the 180 degree rule. It is a rule that deals with how to make a scene, how to direct a scene with cinematography in a way that will not confuse your audience. So in 90% of the situations, this damped track object constraint will be the primary thing that you use, I think. I really do think that it will be. But this is what I'm prototyping and trying to figure out. However, I would like to know how to get this thing to work a little bit better. Because, like, I I've had some weird behaviors out of this where I've actually uh, just, uh, you know, if I go into edit mode real quick here, let me just show you some weird behavior. Now, if I, if I have him selected here and I select this frame and press Shift D and move it over to frame 100 160. Let me click this and go 160 down here. Okay, so the animation is going to be full 160 frames. So I'm going to select both of these frames and have my uh, timeline cursor somewhere in the in-betweening range. And I'm going to interpolate selected strokes and just hit sequence, okay? So nothing happened. Let me press Control z a few times. Okay, let me go to 160, grab it, and on the x-axis move it back, okay? Now let's try that again. I select both of these frames and now interpolate and we we have him moving back away from the camera if we press zero here and we play the animation you know he's moving backward in three-dimensional space nothing special however I, I've just had some strange behaviors where if he's moving backwards and I play the animation let me go into object mode grab this and move it and I start moving the camera he starts moving all wonky okay and this doesn't matter if I if, if I'm using for, for those of you that are more familiar with a blender uh, it doesn't matter if, if I go add curve bezier, okay, and, and uh, then add an empty, you know, and, and, and then uh, parent the camera to the empty and then parent the empty to the camera and, and, and then try to follow it. it. This guy still moves around. So that gets me to think that somehow I need to get him attached to another bezier curve. Uh, but by basically, I need to have him connected to an empty and have that empty connected to the bezier curve so basically it's so freaking confusing i'm trying to get this down if somebody you know you know what this this gives me a perfect opportunity to self-promote this i have a server on discord okay and it's really helpful i've had people inside of the share your work channel share some really good content here and it's led into really good educational content content that i don't normally pop out inside of a video i like someone provides me uh an image a really nice image okay great image you know what? let me give this guy credit because he I, I don't really have his permission to show you guys this but he released it on my discord so I, I can't figure it being uh, too too inappropriate but a uh, Janik Janik drew this okay uh, great image however for one point perspective this image would not work she would have to be pointed towards the same vanishing point as he is okay in order for this to make any sense in linear perspective however with curvilinear perspective it's salvageable and I start showing images that I've shown in in some of my videos and I show how I would create uh, variously different types of uh, uh, perspective grids for uh, that image and then I grab that exact same grid and I go ahead and apply 
apply it to his image and say, see, uh, the way this way you don't have to ch redraw her at all, okay? Even if it wasn't a mistake, even if it was a mistake, it doesn't matter because you can make this this image work if you add things in the background with curved linear perspective, okay? And then I, I continue even further describing more about uh, curved linear perspective uh, here. Uh, just, you know, this right here, talking here about all of this. This is content that I've never released inside of a video before. So there are reasons for you guys to join my Discord server, but those of you that are most especially part of the audience that are already familiar with Blender, it'd be really nice if you guys jumped on my Discord and you would allow me to pick your brain a little bit because I'm able to help you guys out up to a specific point, but I don't know. I, I am struggling uh, with the content for Blender a little bit. I do have, I do believe I can figure it out, but it will take a little bit of time. Uh, but that, in that time, I don't plan on it interfering too much with my Blender content and, and how often it's being released. Anyways, this video's plenty long, and I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found some educational use for it. Yeah. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell or go ahead and follow me on Twitter or go ahead and follow my Discord. It's in the video description below with my Twitter. If you'd like to support my channel, there's a picture of my mascot in the upper right corner right now. That leads to my Patreon. Any support would be much appreciated. If you'd like to see more of my content, click on anything else that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.